I was very, I totally enjoyed the keynote speaker's speech. Um, it was like being in an international relations lecture. But what I missed was he didn't mention anything about women. And I thought, being a professor, I would grade him a C. Uh, because if you're talking about Africa today and you don't mention women, we've missed the boat. Right now, there's a trend happening in Africa with women-led funds and women-originated funds. Now, which I, I had one. An agreement like this that doesn't take cognizance of that trend is not up to date. And also, we talk about gender mainstreaming after the fact. I think the opportunity for the agreement is to do what I call gender centralizing. Make the, have a gender lens as you look at how you implement the agreement so that we're looking at how it implements men, women, and youth at the same time and not as an afterthought. Because if you look at what is happening in Africa now, uh, people are focusing so much on physically crossing borders. That's not really going to be the problem. A lot of the trade will happen virtually. So how do we ensure that there's intellectual property protection? Right now in Africa, you have less than a thousand um, approval for patents on the, uh, across the world. It's the lowest across the world. Even the process for approving patents often infringe on women. So it's, it's often bureaucratic, it's not user friendly, so women who are innovators do not approach it. The agreement has, if it's going to help small, uh, uh, medium uh, scale businesses, has to incorporate from the get go a lens that looks at how to make things less bureaucratic, more user friendly, and more gender useful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kiyo, for those very insightful comments. And it actually makes my job easy because I'll turn immediately to Mrs. Emanuela on, on my right hand side. Uh, Mrs. Emanuela, if you could talk to us. About Ella Food Bank and how they are working to integrate small scale female farmers, particularly, into national and regional value chains. Uh, in, in the President's, uh, Professor Rama's keynote, he mentioned some of the work the bank is doing in terms of supporting the emergence of export trading companies. And uh, when I look at what Ella Food Bank is doing, it seems to be built along a similar model of integrating small scale farmers, giving them an opportunity to access broader supply chains. If you could share your views. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone, and happy birthday, Professor. I'm so happy to be here. Every time I see this kind of gathering, I'm so happy because I believe these are the conversations that would somehow crystallize and move Africa forward. Whether or not we like it, we have to keep having these conversations and um, keep pushing policies and making sure that policies are being implemented. We never really implement everything 100% in Africa. We never implement anything 50% in Africa. So going forward with your question, um, Ella's Food Bank started um, with cattle trading. I used to go to the border of Niger to buy cows. Um, we had to stop when they started the um, cashless policy because we couldn't gather cash to go. Women from Lagos go to Gumel, the border market, to buy cows. It's um, a long way from Lagos. But most of the purchasers you see there are women. So I'm in tune with you when you say women have to be on the table. We have to participate fully to say where it hurts for small uh, enterprise, especially the ones that are um, done by women. We have to be on that table when um, policies are being formulated so that when policies are formulated, they are in tune and realistic with what we are going through, you know. So um, for Ella's Food Bank, the trade agreements that, um, the, the Equal Trade Agreement for us, we, we are still struggling because half the time, even when you want to participate, um, the participations are not in reality. I, I don't know if it's just me as a company, or the product that I push, or I sell, or I participate in it. It's not in reality 
the agreement and um, the trade price in reality with what we find in the market. Simple buying and selling, trading, it has to be made so that it is an ABC understanding of, of trade. It doesn't have to be so sophisticated so that anybody, whether educated or not educated, can understand it. So first, when you formulate policies, um, you have to gather realistic data. Data is important. You can't solve anything except you have the data. And, and this data should not be from a company or an organization that comes to Lagos and sits down. I was in, in a conference sometime, and an organization was talking about data, and they were using data that some European company had provided. It should be African data, realistic data. That's what we're looking for. To say, oh, we have this amount of people or women trading here and there, and this is what they need. So more of realistic data, more, how do, does Jim Ovia put it? We know we have to bring our own infrastructure because these policies take so much time. If you're doing business, really, it takes so much time. And we can't wait because the future is now. So realistic data, make sure that the time it takes to get these policies formulated are reduced and made very realistic. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Ibru, from the perspective of the African Business Roundtable, and, and more generally the African private sector, one of the often heard complaints uh, if you like, is that there is this inherent mistrust between government and the private sector. How do we address this to ensure that both the enabling environment created by the governments under the AFCFTA is able to support the objectives of the African private sector? Yes, you know, in, in the program, mention was made about the new partnership for Africa's development, which is the socio-economic policy for Africa, namely that Africa should create wealth. Africa should partner with the rest of the world. This is not the first of such policy, but this one is a policy of a difference. Uh, and the difference is that the African heads of state realized that the best people to create wealth are the private sector people. And therefore decided that the creation of wealth will involve not only the government, but the entrepreneurs. It has to be a partnership within the public sector and the private sector. And that gave rise to the formation of the Nepal Business Group, which has an office in every presidency in the whole of African Union. There were days in the past when the private, public sector were suspicious of the private sector because they believed they were just out to make money without considering giving something back to the society. But things have changed. The African government now realize that they have to partner with the private sector in order to be able to create wealth. I mean, if you don't create wealth, you don't create employment. You don't create prosperity. You will continue to live in squalor. Uh, a situation where a lot of people in Africa are, are poor is a paradox because uh, in the midst of plenty of poor people. If you don't create wealth, they will continue to be poor because if you don't create wealth, you will create prosperity and you will create employment. And so the working together between the private sector and the public sector became very important. Now, there will be a role for both parties. The private sector will do what it best knows to do, that's to create wealth. But they cannot do so without the partnership with the public sector. The public sector has to create the enabling environment. One of the top mandates of uh, Nepal is the creation of proper infrastructure. Because without proper infrastructure, the private sector cannot, they cannot operate, they cannot perform. In fact, it will make their production, if they are manufacturing, very uncompetitive. 
And if you want to not only trade within Africa, but also trade with the rest of the world, you have to have good infrastructure. So a lot of emphasis has to be based on infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ibrahim. Professor Toby, coordinating the, the private sector to engage effectively on policy issues uh, is becoming extremely important, not only in the context of the AFCFTA. We recently saw uh, SACU member states plus Mozambique conclude the EPA and roll over a similar agreement with the UK. Uh, we've seen China enter into an M uh, FTA with uh, Mauritius. And most recently, uh, the US has announced that it will be negotiating an FTA with Kenya. Uh, these agreements are likely to serve as models for the rest of the continent. What is being done at the continental level, particularly under the Pan-African Private Sector Trade and Investment Committee, and also towards the establishment of the African Business Council to ensure that these agreements do not undermine our integration, but also provide an opportunity for African enterprises to derive the maximum benefit from the, the free trade areas being created. Well, thank you so very much. Um, Professor Rama's presentation dwells significantly, and uh, Gudi Ibru has reinforced in every comment he has made the fact that the wealth we need to create in Africa will come from the private sector. Now, we have unfortunately had a challenge of connect between policymakers and the private sector on the continent of Africa. Indeed, uh, a landmark conference was held in Nairobi, Kenya in 1985. It was sponsored by the Aga Khan Foundation. And that conference looked at a tripartite approach to development in Africa, a collaboration between the private sector, the public sector, and what then was called PDAs, private development agencies, or the social sector, NGO sector. Unfortunately, we've not managed to leave that outcome of that conference well. In Nigeria, we started the Enabling Environment Forum as a result of that conference with co-chairs, one from the private sector at the time, Chief Enex Schnecker of UAC, one from the public sector, Alaji Abubakar Alaji, was the Federal Permanent Secretary in Finance, and Dr. Jack from the social sector. It was actually that which resulted in the Nigerian Economic Summit that we know of today. Um, but what we have seen many times is that government delegations go out and sign international agreements. And then they come back and the private sector says, this is not going to work for us. A classic example is how Nigeria worked towards after. It was obvious that, again, as Professor Ram said, we have a lot of traditional import substitution industries. The idea is not to kill them, but the idea is to give them notice that they can play with greater profit in a different... So, they will, should begin preparing themselves to transit into a new form of play where they will do even better. But because this engagement was not so clear and public sector people run off and sometimes sign agreements that they don't understand very well and the private sector itself is not educated enough to organize itself to align to the trend that is going globally, everybody loses. So if we can create a platform that will enable the private sector to make input seamlessly into policy at the continental level, keyed into by the government, we can have a more effective field of play for investment, for growth in trade, and for improvement in the quality of life of Africans because people get richer as a result of this kind of policy environment. Now, Pat, Pat Flack is making effort to try and become that. Um, but so look on me and some of his colleagues who were with us in uh, uh, Addis Ababa uh, a few months ago. And I remember how excited he was, saying, look, we really didn't know this was happening. And, and that's what we must change, so that the private sector is effectively all keyed in, and we can 
uh, promote what's best in the interest of the private sector, the entire economy, and policy is reflecting it. And we can then lobby government, effectively provide information that enables governments to make the right kinds of choices that create an environment for growth and development. Um, amongst the areas that, you know, really is very key in getting all these intra-African, cross-border kinds of engagement is the challenge of aggregation. We are not going to play effectively at the global level. I ask people, you know, you see, Versace. Versace is a brand. They go around getting small Italian producers to produce to certain quality standards. They pull it together, put their brand on it, and sell it for incredible amounts of money in Europe. But all those small players are taken care of. Professor Rama talked about the trading companies in Asia. When you see that thing that comes from the so those chebos, whether it's a Samsung, whether it's you know, they have done the work that those small players don't have the capacity to do and pull them aggregated. So when Walmart says, I want 20,000 pieces of blue jeans a day, it's not something like, ah, oh, how can we do that? Because it could have been. And many of these aggregations have to happen across borders. Facilitating policies that will make that happen is critical for development, growth, and the wealth of this continent. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, in the interest of time, and as we, we wrap up the session, uh, I'm going to try and be a bit provocative if, if, uh, to the panelists. The African Union Summit is taking place in two days' time. If you were given 30 seconds to address heads of state, what would be your key message with regard to the AFCFTA? Well, certainly events like these time will not allow us to... The first thing I want to say is that I'm indeed very glad that the chair of the Nasima MSME is here. My dear sister, I mean, um, one of the things we want to do is also to see how we can you know, give meaning to it. And the potential is there, and we've tried and it's working. Uh, because looking at the same thing, and like we said, we want to, in SEMA, that is what we are doing. And one of the things we are doing is using the respective chambers. Because part of the problem also is that we just concentrate on way here in places like Laos, all other countries, the subnational level. So we are working closely with her in terms of how to make these things work at that level, as far as the MSMEs themselves is concerned. I must also finally say something about that young people. We have the national youth and the premiers. And please, let us go back and remember, there was a study, Generation Next, Nigeria's Generation Next, and I will ask the young people here to please kindly go back and look at it. And even those of us who are old people, that what do we do with our youth? If we take care and harness, the youth is going to be the oil of tomorrow. But if you do not, the danger is that... Uh, we may be facing the, the blazing end of the AK-47. But I spin it one, and I see the population, youth population, as possible people who will help as far as the AFCTA itself is concerned, as they are proven in the entertainment industry, as far as Bollywood itself is concerned. Thank you. Thank you. I think that, that that's a really good one. What would you say in 30 seconds? I, the main thing would be learn from our mistakes. Um, I've been part of different processes over the last few years, you know, working across Africa, working on the ECOWAS free movement of people and goods. Where are we on that? Working on the AU, the implementation of the AU protocols. Where are we on that? So what lessons have we learned that can be incorporated into this? Because millions and millions of dollars were spent in terms of trying to operationalize all those instruments and frameworks. And how do we ensure that we're not reinventing, but amplifying? Uh, especially when you're talking about in the areas that are particularly relevant for my work. You know, when, you, when you're talking about how you incorporate women, we must ensure, it's very important that we must ensure that this new agreement do not, does not exacerbate the inequalities that exist already. 
um, because we have to come to the table knowing that they do exist. And how do we ensure that they're actually, um, the, the effect, the direct and causal effect of implementing the agreement is to correct, is a corrective measure um, across the board. Thank you. Well, very, very quickly, uh, uh, for me, every leader in Africa must ask themselves the question, what action will we take here that will make the lives of people change dramatically very quickly? It's been done in other parts of the world. If I can't do it, I'm a failure. And keying into some of the conversation taking place here can help me do it. So the question or the thing of the moment is just do it. Um, for me, it would be um, food waste. A number of huge percentage of food produced in Africa goes to waste. So once more, build the infrastructure, that's cold rooms, um, install silos, of course, public-private partnership. When you get the private sector to come in, don't multi-tax us. It should even be Nigerian tax, um, ECOWAS tax, all sorts of tax. Make it simple, straight to the point, because everything has to be so complex. We shouldn't make it complex. Very simple, basic, build the infrastructure, sustain them, when you do policies, people that matter, that are playing key roles, should come to that table and say what they want. Don't assume this is what we want. We want sustainable policies. That's it. Well, in part, I'd just like to repeat what Professor Padutubi said. We do too much of talking and do very little. We talk about how the potentials we have. We don't talk about achievements. Let us forget what our mistakes we've done in the past. Don't let us blame colonial powers for our problems. That is over now. We've been independent in Nigeria for over 50 years. Let's put our future in our hands. Just do it. and create employment. We have the resources, especially agricultural products. Add value to them. Don't export them in their raw form. It's criminal to do so. Because if you export it in the raw form, the importer from Europe, America, they will add value to it and bring it back to you at exorbitant price. That's perpetuating poverty. We should stop that. We should add value. We should process our raw material so that we can get a good value for it abroad. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ibrou. Uh, and with that, I think we've, we've reached the end of our discussion. Uh, let me thank our esteemed panelists and convey my hope that uh, similar dialogues will continue. Because in the words of uh, famous Brazilian philosopher Paulo Freire, trust is established by dialogue. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking the participants with a warm round of applause. Thank you. Trust is established by dialogue. Thank you, all please rise for a group photograph. And then the next panel will come up very swiftly. And that is the final panel session for today. The final one is a panel of young innovators with the theme Innovators Across Frontiers, the new economy champion of Africa. This panel will be moderated by Oluwa Tony Adebite Mo. She's the Executive Director, West Africa for the Africa Venture Philanthropy Alliance. The discussants on the panel
The discussants on the panel are Bishop Feb Idahosa, who is the president of Benson Idahosa University. We have the executive director of the Paradigm Initiative of Nigeria, Benga Sheson. We have the co-founder, the co Godu Hub, and director of Founder Institute Lagos, Chukwemeka Fred Agbata. We have managing director, CEO, News Central Television, Tony Dara. And last but not the least, Habiba Ali, the MD, Susei Renewable Energies Company. Also to join that panel is the director of the Center for International, Center for International Advanced Professional Studies. Professor Anthony Killer. All please come up now. Fair Bidahosa, Benga Sheson, Chukemeka Fred Agbata, Tony Dara, Muji Dayo Dumoye, Founder Juvenis Spa, Habiba Ali, and Anthony Killer. Please push your hands together for every one of them. Okay, Madam Moderator, you can go ahead. Can we all please take our seats? Guests, friends, and well wishes, please let's take our seats. This is the very last of the panel sessions, and we'll bring the event to a close. Please let's take our seats. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. And happy birthday again, Prof. Everyone is going to keep saying that all day today. It is my distinct pleasure to be the moderator of this distinct panel. Um, and we're just going to jump right into it. The agreement is expected to favor small and medium-sized businesses, usually known as SMEs. So which are, the, which are responsible for more than 80% of Africa's employment? and 50% of its G GDP. So I'm going to ask each one of you, and we're going to start maybe from, my, from this way down as we move forward, um, to, to really, one, to tell us who you are, and two, um, tell us what your organization or your company is doing um, to promote and, and to create you know, jobs and, and uh, in, you know, vis-a-vis -vis this um, Africa trade agreement. Right. Um, thank you very much. Um, my name is Tony Dara, and I run New Central TV. And for those who know me, this is my first, my second step, rather, at establishing a, a TV news channel. Now, I'm operating the media sector. And for a lack of a better way of putting the argument, the GDP of the media economy of every nation is about 10% of its GDP. So if you want to make comparison with a country like Nigeria, you're looking at about uh, $40 billion worth of economy that we need to develop. And look across the entire continent and see how big that economy is. Now. That is knowledge, and for me, it's acting on that knowledge to create jobs and create opportunities. And, and I think that's what Africa free trade really brings to the table. Because the moment you think about a sector, and you look at the economy, and you have an idea of what to do, you just do it, as Prof had just highlighted in the last panel. And the idea is that you have an idea that or you have a concept that translates beyond who you are, your immediate environment, but for something that can be consumed by every other person in this context, uh, Africa. I mean, 
Here we are, we are lucky behind in the art of telling our own stories. And that's what New Central has come to do, to tell the story of the African in the African context. And before you just let, push me across, push the mic across the, uh, the panel, I need to make this very important point that if we don't tell the story in our own context, we hear from the prism of other people. And I tell you, CNN, BBC, and the likes of that are doing us no good because for, for you to know, you know, corporate Nigeria literally finances CNN Africa with about $10 million of money that is earned from the continent at the detriment of media companies on the continent. And for me, we, we just can't allow that to continue, but to do it and do it for Africans. Thank you. Good, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Modi Dayodumoye. I, I run Juvenile Spa. I operate in the wellness industry. Uh, the wellness says is a $4.3 trillion industry. It's not a space where we look into. And um, it came from the place of the state uh, of how our airport is. Um, I know a lot of us go to our airports in Africa majorly, and it's not something that we like. And I decided to do something different to make wellness be at the airport, and you get to improve your experience while you fly. That's basically what we do. Okay, so as relates to APTA, um, because majorly from my perspective, and not just have her alone, uh, the, the um, goals that the UN is trying to achieve, um, we, we position ourselves to create jobs. Okay, so we have one of the outlets that we open in Lagos, and we're scaling across Africa, actually, all the major airports in Africa. We have a footprint in Nairobi uh, at the moment, and we're working on that to improve the experience of travelers, basically, as they fly. So creating jobs, bettering the experience of people while they visit the African continent. Thank you. Um, my name is Anthony Kila. I'm the Center Director for CIPS. That's the Center for International Advanced and Professional Studies. As to what I do, I like to say I do what I like. But I guess you're not allowed to say that. Um, let me start. Everybody said happy birthday to, um, to Patrick Tommy, But let me just comment that but he told me he's one of those people that on the day of his birthday he walks. Because normally when you go to this thing, they just give some speeches and you drink. He turned it to real work on his birthday. Those are considerations for the African trade. Huh? We, should. <laughs> we should probably factor on. I, I want to say four things just before we move on. Number one is that, especially when it comes to young innovators in Africa, it is very crucial for us to understand two things. Number one is that the development of Africa is peculiar. Other parts of the world have seen a positive correlation between state and development. By state, I mean diplomacy, I mean military and infrastructure. In Africa, there's a negative correlation. Everywhere the state goes, development dies. Because generally speaking, and students of history will tell you, Africa was known for war and trade. The trade lines, that is why you go to Ivory Coast and you meet Yoruba settlement there. You go across Africa and you meet people from all over. They were traders. So intra-African trade was there before African states came. It only died after the states came. It died for two reasons. Colonialism did not think of the trade between Lagos and Abidjan. It talked about trade towards UK, France, and Germany and Portugal. And when after colonialism, the post-colonial leaders did not sit down to effectively say, how do we trade amongst Africa? I say this because inventors and SMEs must know that the state is a necessary nuisance. Um, good Hebrew gone. He went to my school decades ahead of me. I was a very bad footballer in my school. But they always put me in the team because I was needed in case they needed to talk. <laughs> so we should, SMEs should consider the state as a necessary nuisance. Development comes between partnership, between the real creators of wealth and jobs. And that is where the focus should be on. 
Now, as to what we do, and I guess what got me to my ticket here, and to the after things you do, and I'm very happy to see John Darrow here because we need to talk about that. We are trying, based on that philosophy, to create a platform to actually aggregate and expose Nigerian producers, especially young ones. So the idea, and it's not a very novel idea, just the way the Made in Italy brand was created, not being an Italian, I served on that board, in which they created an actual brand. A board was set up to say, let us create and promote and sustain the brand made in Italy after the war. And it's still on today. We thought, let us start that from Nigeria and then go to Africa. And I think that kind of consciousness to say, we want to create this kind of project, this kind of brand, and then allow people to aggregate around it is what we need. And here, I go to my constituency. And the only way to do it when we talk of conscious effort is to link the academia and production together. There has to be thought behind action. When there's no thought behind action, it will never be sustainable. Thank you. Excellent point. Uh, my name is Feb Idahosa, and I'm the president of Benson Idahosa University. Uh, I want to say thank you for, to Prof, and also congratulations on your birthday, sir. What I do in terms of what we want to see happen in Africa, because just like you said, African development will not come from outside the country, outside the country, it must come from within our borders. So what we do is we, we encourage young men and young women that are in school. Um, we first of all began by saying, how do we increase Africa um, communication? We're teaching French. But French, teaching French is just, will just help reduce borders across West Africa. So let's go beyond that. So we went beyond that and began to work with um, our young men and young women at the university, just as the young, the young other panelists spoke about just now by creating um, uh, courses that would integrate entrepreneurship, integrate business into your classwork so that that way as you study law or as you study engineering, you understand finance at the same time, that will help you be able to seek beyond just your course of study. Um, so we went beyond that and we began to take that into creating clubs like our Young Diplomat Club that teaches, that connects young men and young women from our schools to other schools across Nigeria and then across Africa. So they begin to understand that Nigeria is not the only place in Africa. Um, everyone else in Africa is part of the bigger conversation. Then we'll be on there, and I think where we are right now is we, we, we start talking about saying, just like Prof, Prof earlier on, we have to create wealth by creating value. And so we must teach our young men and young women to create value. So, so entrepreneurship then goes into creating value. Don't create wealth by stealing it by going to the government, go and steal wealth or by studying from an employer, you must think of how can we create value in what we do. As we do that, then we began talking to and seeing that our young men were doing a lot of, doing a lot of work, but um, as we we're just hearing just now, we need to also look at what can we do to decrease the inequalities. So for example, we are working with men and women, young men and women, and saying, young women, we're seeing that we don't have enough representation of young women at the table. So our work now is saying, what do we do to increase and amplify the voices, just as we're here just now, amplify the voices of young women. Let's not do things, as you said, to, to create or to exacerbate the inequalities that already exist. Let's work with our young women and begin to show them that they also lead the conversation. You see, uh, the young women make up the, the greater part of our population. And when you realize that, you must understand then that we need to push and encourage them to begin to say, in this space, we have a voice. So what we're doing now is we're saying, okay, how do we amplify voices? So we have a program that we're using now to say, look, by the year 2025, can we find and create five strong women in the areas of entrepreneurship? Can we create five strong women in the areas of education? Can we create five and, and strong women in the areas of filmmaking? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so by, 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 by encouraging them, by connecting them, connecting them to mentors, in Nollywood for filmmaking, mentors engineering, to show them that, okay, what, what we are doing, what, what you want to do has been done, this is how it's done, as opposed to, uh, don't try to, you will not succeed, do, that's what Nigerians do. But to actually do it, it's been done before. So can we get someone who has already done it before and show you how that can be done again? Uh, there's a very, very, um, the, 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 the number of young women in technology, in IT, is, is low in Nigeria. Can we increase that number? Now, my, my point for doing all this is saying this, that if you begin to work, 
with young women, and of course young men, of course, but, but we're going to work with these young people and say, in Africa, we are underrepresented in, in the rest of the world. Now, if we increase your knowledge, your understanding in these areas, what can we do to strengthen Africa? Once that's done, then our voices can be heard. So we amplify your voices as women, amplify your voices as young people, and then you leave and begin to create value. As that value is created, then you can exchange it across borders, and from there, you create a conversation that the world will listen to. That's where we start. So. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, happy birthday, Prof. Um, so my name is CFA. Um, well, Chukoneka Fred Agbata, but people call me CFA, and not the financial CFA. These are my initials. Um, so um, you know, I mean, I can't talk about, about my story without mentioning uh, CVL Role Model Forum. Uh, many years ago, I signed up for the Role Model Forum. And each week, we gather to listen to established entrepreneurs tell us about the stories of their lives. And one day, um, Mo Abudu came to share her experience. And she talked about how she left her plum job to go into broadcasting. Now, I always have a rule. Each time I go for those programs, I leave with a goal in mind. So that day, I left with that goal that I was going to get onto a media platform to share my thoughts about technology disruption and how I can make the most of it. What cut the long story short, that was what led me to start with Nigeria Info. So I started my radio show there, and from there I moved on to, um, to print. I write for Punch today. I have a column called ICT Clinic. I moved on to Channel CV. I, run a TV, I have a show called Tech Trends on Channels TV. Now, my, during the course of the show, I started moving around Nigeria, and I was looking at how we can use innovation to help empower young people and create more jobs. Now that led me into doing a couple of other things. Now today, I serve as the regional director for Africa for Founder Institute. Founder Institute is the world's largest pre-seed accelerator designed to help drive entrepreneurship, innovation, and also help Nigeria prepare for disruption that will be caused by automation, by AI, and the rest of it. Now the goal for us is that every year, we will take a hundred young people through an incubation program that will better prepare them for the future. And the whole idea is that we need to create jobs. We have realized that one way to get Nigeria out of the quagmire that we are in today, which is caused and fought by poverty, is to create jobs. And so that's the role that I play today. And not just in Nigeria, but across Africa. So my, I cover most cities in Africa. And everywhere we go, we preach one message. Africa, Nigeria, get ready because innovation is coming and it's here already. Uh, because state government may ban Gokada for all they care, but some other one will come up and it will also disrupt. So it's the way it is. And so every young person here, please note this, that automation, disruption, um, AI, and the rest of them will determine your future. So leave this place trying to understand how to become a better you. It's not in your certificates, it's not in your degrees, it's in how, what kind of skill that you have and how you are able to better adapt. Thank you very much. Fantastic. <laughs> as, as you can hear, everyone has uh, the story that they've told really, again, ties into what we, why the agreement is so important and why we need an African, uh, a free African um, trade agreement and, and to really implement it. So I, you know, some of you are probably wondering, what is she doing with that phone? As they were talking, I was taking notes. So this is technology at, at work. Um, so, I want to, so I want to now <laughs> ask our panelists you know, to talk to us and, and tell us how, in terms of this area of innovation, and CFA has already started. You know, I met CFA during the, the, the large um, you know, innovation support network um, um, event and again just as passionate as he just um, is he, he continues to be that passionate so I really appreciate uh, the energy that you bring to this panel um, maybe we can talk very quickly maybe starting first and I have to say Bishop Feb Idahosa <laughs> he, 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 he announced himself as just uh, Feb Idahosa but he, he's a bishop and he's also 
someone that, again, is trying to do a lot with his university and the school as well in, in Benin. So tell us a little bit about how technology is, is being you know, used um, as, as a tool um, that will help uh, the next generation or this current generation as well. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, first of all, when I was born, there was no bishop on my birth certificate. <laughs> it was just fair. So, all right, so what do we do? Um, we realized, like as we said, we heard earlier on as well, that the fastest um, integration of technology into Africa and into what we're doing is by young people. I remember when I was a child, my parents would tell me to fix the TV. And then now I'm older, I'm telling my son, who's only eight years old and nine years old, to, to fix things for me. So young people are the ones who are actually pushing the envelope when it comes to technology and things, and, and things that happen. So what we're doing is we're encouraging our, young, our, our, our students and everywhere else we go to use technology um, through apps and through different, through different ways of learning. What we're, we're teaching at the university not just by copying notes. That's what everyone does, you just copy notes. But why, what, it'll take you five minutes to type notes into, into your computer, put it, on the, put it on the projector, and then send to, one, send to everyone in the classroom so they'll have the notes ahead of time. But our archaic mindset wants us to, 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 to still go back there. So we realize learning is done, learning is so different. The next, the next frontier for learning is not going to be done in the classroom. It's going to be done on people's um, tablets, phones, etc. Um, next few years, like you're saying the band go kada. In the next few years, there'll be driverless cars everywhere. So you won't even own a car anymore. You just simply pick up your phone or put whatever that's there, pull up a car, car will come and pick you up, drop you where you're going, and it will disappear. So we're realizing that disruption is coming, innovation is coming, so we are encouraging our, our students to embrace technology and to say, whatever you must do, do it with the idea that the future is coming. So we teach with the idea of the future coming, and um, with our program, like I mentioned, for, for young ladies, to encourage them as well, too, we're saying five by 25. What can we do in five areas of, of, our, of our curriculum that by the year 2025 will not exist anymore? So what must we think? If we begin thinking that way now, then we can make sure that things, we are ahead of them. We are there when it happens. Um, someone told me one time that a Blackberry would not exist before. I said, it's a lie. <laughs> I love my Blackberry. It's gone. <laughs> Ten years from now, the iPhone that you all know and love that you have right there will probably not exist. So think about what will not exist in five years, and then how can you position yourself to be there? We said Africa will change. When Africa changes, where will we be? We must be there. So when it happens, we've changed, things. We've changed along with it. Thank you. Ms. Sadara, tell, tell us how we can, again, with this new agreement, yeah. um, you talked about rewriting the story yes. and writing our own story. Yeah. What sort of narrative do we need to start writing around this agreement, you know, in terms of even policy and the intersection of policy and implementation? What, what sort of stories do we need to start writing? I, I, I think we need to um, get on to the doing it aspect of things. And, um, and I'll just speak from my own experience in trying to say that here we are, we want to speak the African story. Now, how can an African story come from the Nigerian voice alone? That's not possible. So you need to have the diversity of the continent on that platform. And um, in doing so, uh, New Central has employed people across the continent. We have people here in Lagos who are from Kenya, Zimbabwe, South Africa, and still counting. But here is a problem that an African cannot come to work in, Af in, in an African country without a work visa, without a work permit, without all the barriers that you can think of. Meanwhile, you have uh, a situation where non-Africans can come here with ease because of one thing or the other, because either they're in a sector that you know, Africans find more lucrative uh, uh, or more useful in the case of construction companies where you have the Chinese who are coming in here with low or no education compared to our own people and having work permits and so on, but a fellow African from Cameroon will have to wait for months to get a work visa to work in an African country. And vice versa, you want to go to South Africa as a Nigerian with a visa. 
But if, you, if you're traveling with a British passport, you don't need one. You know, so um, we need to dissolve some of these barriers, remove those, some of those barriers. And I think the Africa Free Trade Act is coming to do that. And I hope it does that fast. And fast enough because time is also fleeting as we wait to get all these things done. And it's not enough for us to gather around at AU summits or whatever summit we go to to talk about these things. We should, also, we should make it a priority that when we speak about these things, we are speaking about solutions that have already been done, just the way we have now with the, uh, the Africa Exit Payment Platform. You know, because, again, I need to provide payments to freelancers across the continent. How do I translate Naira to, to Kenyan shillings without converting to dollars first? These are the impediments. Yes. And when, you, when the uh, president of the Free Asian Bank talked about the new payment platform, I was very joyous because I said, well, one barrier off. So these are the stories that we need to talk about. We have barriers that transcend uh, geographical borders that are quite economic and social in nature that we need to you know, dissolve very, very quickly to be able to create this pool of economy for our people. Thank you. Um, Moji, <laughs> thank you. Wellness is, a, is, a, is an area that is often looked upon as an area for the wealthy, for the rich, um, for those that have that disposable or extra income, then you can now go and take care of, of yourself and be in a place where you can relax and listen to some good music or get a massage or what have you. So, so to, you know, and we live in a country where, again, just sitting in traffic, your blood pressure is going to go up, just being in traffic. We, we know what's been happening going, you know, on, on the bridge just recently, that there's been just an incredible amount of traffic. Um, and, and so on, for, you know, just the frustration of living and working on our continent. What, what is that industry trying to do to help, again, you know, the, the rate of suicide has gone up. Um, that things that we don't even used to hear about on our continent, we're hearing about it. What is your industry trying to do? What are you trying to do in your sphere of in influence as a, as a young innovator in this wellness area? To, to help eradicate some of these issues. And, and again, how is that helping across Africa since you're moving your, your work across Africa? Okay, that's a, that's a very amazing question. Thank you. It's something I'm really very passionate about. Like you said, doing what you love. Um, I believe wellness should start f not from when you get to the hospital. I think it should start from where you are. And I think a lot of um, issues that crop up that make people end in the hospital can be avoided if we we'll pay attention and if we we'll take care of ourselves. Okay, so uh, like everything in life, we just have to be intentional. You have to be intentional about your health, you have to be intentional about um, going out. I know it's crazy, I know traffic sometimes is something else, but you have to dedicate time for you. And you don't have to visit um, maybe a spa or whatever. You can create your own same um, environment by yourself. Say you could plan to shut down for a particular time where you just concentrate and think. See, all this conversation we are having on this panel, we can have it if you're not well. It is if you're well that we can have a conversation around building Africa, around creating jobs for Africans, around you know, um, increasing the GDP of Africa. But if there's no wellness in terms of our youth, in terms of our whole people, you can't have the correlation. But the long and short of it is be intentional, be deliberate about creating a sane moment for yourself where you can be you and you can discover wellness with yourself. Yeah. I just talked. <laughs> so I was just going to ask about technology in, in your work and oh, how, yeah, that, how you're trying to, again, get young people engaged in the work that you're doing and also looking at the gender lens. I know that uh, Feb has already won the heart of Thelma um, talking about you know, their work around, around um, gender -less lens um, you know, inclusion and, and, and investing, but please. Well, if, if the bishop um, won our heart with that, I would shock our heart. <laughs> and I'll just tell you what we do as CAPS is that we don't have male and female toilets. We don't separate them. We just have them as toilets. The idea being that if you're training business managers, 
there is no male and female in the boardroom. So let's start out from the classroom. And that, that's, those are one of the things we do. In terms of technology, one of the things we did immediately, we started in Nigeria, was to from day one, make the center a paperless center. So that anybody that studies or teaches at CIAS would not use paper. And lessons are taught on the screen, and you get it in your Dropbox or your email straight away. Now, it's a very good thing because for starters, you don't have any professor telling you hand out because it's straight away. The downside of that for students is that you can't say the dog ate my notebook or water fell on my paper because even if you broke your laptop, it will be saved in the cloud. So we eliminated all those excuses. But I think seriously and sort of philosophically speaking, the idea is to embrace technology like a shortcut. It's like a library, it's like Google. You don't have to lead the life. You don't have that old as Patrick told me. You know, he's very old. You don't have to grow that old to know things in life. Just read his books. You know, if you read um, the, some of his writings, then you can just live his life in a week. So you don't have to start from the beginning. And, you know, by the same token, if you can get yourself a Kindle, or you can get yourself a good iPad, then you can load hundreds of books. So that one holiday, you have lived the life of hundreds of people. So people have to see innovation and technology, one as inevitable, but above all, as a shortcut. So you can go quicker. So that these days, and I see why you're you there, after a meeting of three people, the next thing is they set up a WhatsApp group. People are fixated with that thing. But that's the world. You know, that's the way it goes. Because when you have a WhatsApp group, one, we don't have to meet physically. We can start doing conversation whilst I'm at it. When you do WhatsApp group, don't send people happy new month. Don't. We should stop doing that thing in, 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 in using technology. Just do, this is a working group for WhatsApp, and use it to communicate, and it will save time and energy, and it will save you from the stress of traffic as well. I always make it that point for people. When people say they want to see me or talk to me, I ask, can we chat about it? Mm -hmm. But, you know, you don't, it, it saves you a lot of that mess. And I say something straight away. John Darius here, he says it's second time around. It's a shame that people don't recognize John Darius straight away. Your problem about are we financing CNN Africa, trust me, with the kind of content you did with NN24, there'll be no problem. It's not about protection, it's not about pathos, it's not about emotion. As the uh, Professor Mar said in his speech, and I was just commenting on his speech earlier on, that the keynote speaker's speech is like red wine. You take it, and after time, it starts coming out in you. Bishop doesn't like it, but no mind. No, no. Never mind. Bishop, Bishop <laughs> drinks wine, too. And there's a, there's a strong point, you know, about the key thing is competition. And I think the CBN Gov said it as well. We don't have to be protective. We don't have to buy Africa because we are patriots. What we need to do is to teach African producers that can compete with the world. We just have to be competitive. And the way to do that is by using technology. The idea, I always tell people, when you bring a project to me, I say, Google it. Who has done what before? Don't start from the beginning. And you know, you, you have the whole world at your palm. And that is what technology can do. We must see it, I recap, as an inevitable way forward, and we must embrace it as a shortcut to success. So, I just want Thank to say you. something about this. One want... thing, and then I'm going to turn it to CFA to help us close the session with an inspirational word. Okay. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's about you don't have to be in a place to do a thing, just Google it. I remember when I was going to start the airport spa business, I've never seen it done anywhere in Africa before, and I just Googled it, like you said, and without literally visiting New York or Israel, I saw exactly how it was done. So Google it. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much. So CFA, please. Okay, so uh, how many people here use uh, Candy Crush? Do you play Candy Crush here? Yeah. Uh, Minecraft? Yeah, okay, some people. Um, so, but of course, a lot of people use Facebook, use Twitter, and the rest of them. 
Now, where I'm going is that the truth is that um, while we respect things like Afikta and the rest of them, I mean, I sit on the, on the board or on, on the team of young Nigerians or Africans trying to make sure that we integrate uh, into the Afikta system technologically so I understand what's happening there. But however, let's understand that selling innovation and disruption actually is borderless. So when I mention these products, you don't know where they are, but people buy them everywhere. Who's going to regulate Facebook? Facebook has a, a couple of a handful of staff in Nigeria, but over 30 million users who use them make good money from the country. Who's regulating Facebook? You know, so point is technology is a leveler, it's a leveler, it's a game changer. Um, Nigeria has to think through how we want to be positioned. And one of the ways to do that is to ensure that we create more opportunities for a lot of young people, which was why Tommy Davis and I and a couple of other people came up with Innovation Support Network. Exactly. What that simply means is that across Nigeria today, we have close to 100 innovation hubs. Now, in my movement around the country, I found out that a lot of them were struggling with infrastructure, with facility, and most importantly, with curriculum. So I got together with Tommy Davids, one of the greatest angel investors across Africa, to start up that innovation support network such that we can create a body where we can, for example, whitelist curriculum and exchange ideas. And we had our first program sometime last year. But the point is, we need to look at our country and every decision we make from the point of view of innovation. How would it help us to grow the jobs? Because think about it. Bishop mentioned driverless cars. When driverless cars comes, it means that drivers might lose their jobs. Mm. It will, and I'm being nice. Uh, I'm being nice, right? Uh, so this one comes with certain... So um, I, I was lucky to join the Swedish government on a tour of the Swedish innovation ecosystem. Sweden is a country that has less than 1% of menial labor or menial jobs. So you can't see things like gitman, driver, those kind of jobs are gone. Full automation. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, Nigeria will get there. How soon? I don't know. So from the banks to everyone here, academia, the respected elders, let's help these young people by teaching them the skills, giving them the empowerment that would help them prepare for the future. Because disruption is here to stay. Thank, thank you very, you very, very much. You, thank you, thank you, thank you. To our panelists, I'm so honored to be with you. And again, let's continue to co-invest, co-design, and co-create the future that we want to see, not just in Nigeria, but across Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Febi Dahosa, Chukwemeka Fred Agbasa, Tony Adik Bitemo, Muji Dayo Dumoye. Thank you very much, Professor Patutomi, please. We need you up here and gifts, boss. <laughs> Professor Horanma, please. And Professor Otomi, female. Please join him. Mr. Chairman, I just want to have you coming up and going down again, but this is the last time we're going to do that, sir. Put your hands together for the former CVN governor and oldest man in the hall. It's the last time we're going to do this uh, uh, day coming up. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right, that's the last panel, and that brings us to the last of the formal side of the event. Can I please have our two sonorous voices again, TA and Blessing? They will serenade us into the last segment of the program. CK and Blessing, please come up now. 
I don't know if you have any questions for any of the panelists. Any questions, comments? Okay. Can we have a glass of champagne? Sorry, there's a bottle of champagne somewhere there. Oh, sorry, it's champagne, they say it is. I thought it was champagne, actually. C-H-A-M-P. It's champagne now, isn't it? Yeah. All right, let's go. Okay, Mr. Chairman, you please join them. Our keynote speaker, Professor Oranma, please, we need you here. Mr. Tunde Maku, please, will conduct the cutting of the cake. Okay, so are we ready? Prof, what shall we count now? Uh, count uh, to 90. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to count down oh. Hello? Oh. to 94. Hello? We're going to count oh. down to 64 now. Okay. So at 64, you do the right thing. Oh. Okay, so 10, oh. 14, Hello? 38, 45, Oh. Oh. Fifty one. Oh. Sixty two. And sixty four. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. Wow. Professor Patsutomi and wife, please remain there. The rest of us can take our, our leave now. So, Prof, it's you alone with your birthday cake, you and your wife. You and your wife alone. Can the rest of us please step back a bit, please? Prof and children, prof wife and children.
Professor Patsutomi, his wife and children, alone, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, Professor Patsutomi, his wife and members of the last panel, the very last panel that spoke, Members of the very last panel and all the speakers that are around, all the panelists that are still with us. Okay. Professor Patsumi and all the panelists, please, from any of the previous sessions. Yeah, panelists, 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 it's your turn with Prof and his wife. All right, let's do this at the count of 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, Prof and, um, <coughs> Prof and Widows, all the Widows, please. There's still some of them here. All the Widows, please. That this. All right, thank you, panelists. Thank you. Thank you. It's not a photo panel. <laughs> thank you. Widows, please. Board members of CVL, next, and, and students of Christopher University, students of Christopher University, and then students of Lagos State University, and then students of students of Lagos State University, students of uh, Bafemi Aolo University. All please be on standby. It's the turn of the widows, please. Widows, 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 please come around. Stand around Jesus. Jesus is the husband of widows. Ah, Madam, you're a widow. You don't look like one of. <laughs> All right, widows. Supported by Prof. After the widows would have. Thank you, widows. Thank you. Stands of Christopher University. Christopher University. Students of Christopher University, please. Please hold on for them to get down. Christopher University. Christopher University, please. Christopher University, please come up, please come up, please come up. Christopher University. Christopher University has a large delegation, so we have to take it easy and hold on. They are coming all the way from Lagos Ibadan Expressway, kilometer 99. I'd like to take a moment to appreciate and recognize all of our partners, Afrexim Bank, the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mutual Benefits Assurance, Zenith Bank, Internet Solutions Nigeria, United Bank for Africa, Fidelity Bank, First Bank, Wale Olanikbekun and Co, Pavilion Technologies, NNPC, FBN Holdings, Nimasa, Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Coca-Cola, and most profoundly, Echo Bank, the Pan-African Bank. We want to specially recognize from Echo Bank, Sunday, Abba, Business Head, Trade Finance, and Simon Unegbu, Manager, 
Trade Products Echo Bank. Echo Bank, the Pan African Bank, thank you very, very much. We are greatly appreciate you. We appreciate all our media partners, Daily Independence, Classic 97.3, Plus TV, Business Day, The Guardian, Beats 99.9 FM, NTA, Punch, Vanguard, Nigeria Info FM, Inspiration 92.3 FM, News Agency of Nigeria, Lagos Stocks 91.3 FM, and Channels Television. Thank you to every one of you. Thank you, thank you. We appreciate you. The song Stress and the song Star. Um, TK and Blessing are next with Prof. TK and Blessing next. Lagos State University, please wait. Lagos State University, please take this way. Please go that way. There's a lot of traffic at that junction. So Lagos State University, please take this place. All right. Thank you, Noun. Thank you very much. TK and Blessing, please. TK and Blessing next. Noun, you've had your turn. Thank you. TK and Blessing, quickly. Thank you, TK and Blessing. Lagos State University. There are you people are too proud. Go, he's not taking a picture again. Last to go back. That's how they were trending last week. They said they are proud. You people are too proud. CVL staff, please be on standby. You're coming next. After CVL, we're taking Wale Olane Kweko and Associates. Lagos State University, we are doing this at the count of 10. 10, 9, 8. Seven six five four three two one. We are Lasu. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wale Olani Kweku and Associates. Wale Olani Kweku and Associates. Wale Olani Kweku and Associates, please. Lasu, you've had your turn. Thank you. You can start going now because there will be traffic at Yanoba. Wale Olani Kweku and Associates, please. Wale Olani Kweku and Associates. Are they here? They're not? Wale Olani Kweku and Associates. Obafemi Aola University, you are next. The Anima Community, please come up stage this way. Anima Community, please. And near my community, please come up this way. When you take a picture, go down that way. The near community, Wale Alani Kwekwanko, thank you. Please go down that way. Obafemi Aola University, you are, next. you are the only one. Now only you, I can come. All the way from Ife. Okay, OAU, special picture. What's Professor Orama? Come and take a picture with your alumni. Wait, 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 wait. This is Ife. Oh, God, please wait. OAU, sir. Prof from Afrexim Bank. OAU, you are in Egypt campus. She's in the mate campus. So you can come up stage now. OAU. After OAU, we're taking Anioma. OAU OAU quickly please Are you OAU? Excuse us please If you are not OAU please Yes OAU OAU Going, going, going Great effect. Thank you. Thank you. Please go down that way, sirs. That's the exit. Anioma is next. After your picture, please go down that way. Anioma community is next. Anioma community is next.
Anioma, please. At the count of 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Anioma, thank you. Please go down that way. That's the exit. That's the exit. Go down that way, please. Everybody else, go down that way. Now, HIC. 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 Please quickly. Now, please be on standby. After HIC, University of Lagos. HIC at the count of six, five, four, three, two, and one. Thank you. University of Lagos, are they here? Okay, National Open University. Now. Unilag first, Unilag first, Unilag first. Unilag, sorry. Unilag, Akoka. Okay. That school very close to a swamp. Is it that school by a swamp? Near Bariga. University of Bariga, Akoka. Sorry. University of Lagos. Okay, so University of... Okay, are you Unilag? Hey, why are you not here? <laughs> Your certificate should be questioned. I call Unilag. You are not here. All right, thank you. Unilag, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Unilag. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Noun is next. Thank you, Unilag. This way, that way, exit that way. Noun, National Open University of Nigeria. Go that way, go that way. National Open University of Nigeria. Bayelsa States. We have a delegation from Bayelsa States. Members of staff of CVL. Members of staff of CVL. You are the ones who put this together. CVL, Center for Values in Leadership. All members of staff of CVL. This is your brain walk. This is your brain child. Francis, Modestus, Isioma. Bonafide members of staff of the Center for Values in Leadership. Innocence, annually. CVL staff. Thank you very, very much. We hope that we've been able to stir a great discourse that would improve the chances of Africa trading with Africa. CVL, please gather together. All right, thank you. Now, CVL. All CVL, please. Center for Values in Leadership. Center for Values in Leadership. CVL, 10987654322. All CVL, so I have to slow down. I can stand up for CVL. So you have to go down that way. You have to go down that way. The same rules apply. Poise. Poise finishing school. Poise finishing school. Poise finishing school. Thank you very much, everybody. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you for staying till the end. It's exactly 10.30 to 2.30, four hours. Thank you, thank you. All right. All right, thank you. Now, Prof will not snap with Prof. Everybody has snapped with Prof. The only person that has not snapped a picture with Prof is Prof. So, Prof, snap a picture with Prof. Okay, it's okay now. Don't remove Prof's hands. Ah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Prof, just you and your cake. Hold on.
Prof, you have your cake alone. Photographer, please hold the knife. Or hold the cutlass if you like. All right, thank you. One more. Friends and well wishers. Friends and well wishers will come after this. Are you not? Friends and well wishers, please. The most photographed man with prof today. The award goes to you. Congratulations. All right, friends and well wishers, please. Friends and well wishers. Friends and we was not. Family, friends, and well-wishers. Friends and well-wishers.